look like this. Here you go, little guy. Oh, we landed on him. Whoa. Just look at how far these sharks travel. They tell us that they still celebrate the boys' birthdays. Because nobody is trapped inside of this chemical plant, they can wait a little. Some people that you'll be able to look for, that duck. Great time with this new assignment, and Renata is certainly ready for the game. Hey, Renata. She said she has a newborn baby. She had to run down the street with her baby covered up. When we were down this way at a marina, I could actually taste some of the salt from the water because of how hard the wind was pushing it. I feel like we're kind of eating the mascot here. You've made so many shrimp yeah. things. And we've got to take advantage of it. Police tell us that they have a person of interest, although that is different from having a suspect. You may not find anywhere else like this pickle beer. This is where it all started, not in Clay County, but here at the Duval County Jail. This is Matanzas Boulevard, but right now it is a river. <laughs> Well, something big that we have been keeping tabs on, weren't sure if it was going to happen and didn't know until right before the defense got up, but Daryl Daniels, the former sheriff of Clay County, chose not to testify in his own defense. The defense did not bring any witnesses. However, the prosecution brought into this courthouse more than 12 people to come in and testify. The criminal case grew out of a 2019 incident in which deputies say Daniels asked that his longtime girlfriend be arrested for stalking. He's charged with seven counts of evidence tampering and lying to law enforcement. Witnesses testified over the past three days that Daniels attempted to or did delete information from his agency issued phone. They also testified he asked sheriff's office employees to conduct background checks on people in other states for his personal use. That includes the ex-husband of his longtime girlfriend. Daniels attorneys today argued he should be acquitted because any information deleted existed elsewhere, including on the girlfriend's phone. His effort to turn a phone in where all of this stuff is backed up on servers cannot constitute tampering. It exists everywhere. Indeed, it's right in front of you. That he just decided to delete a 10 year old Google account immediately after this woman he's had a six year affair with gets arrested involving him. And that's just supposed to be just sort of a odd coincidence. After lunch with closing arguments, then the case goes to the jury. So it is possible that we could get a verdict today. Renata DiGregorio, live in Clay County, First Coast News, on your side. Hey foodies, under this lemon, one of the best Cubanos you'll ever eat. Mine is half gone. I'm talking about El Cubano Jack. I wanted to bring a little bit of my South Florida roots and that, that South Florida flavor. Foodies, get ready. Chef Esteban's whipping up your favorite combo of sandwich magic at the new home for El Cubano Jack. Now inside Lemon Street Brewing on Dennis Street in the Rail Yard District. It's my favorite sandwich. The secret is the sauce. As you know, for those who've had my sandwich, that sauce is what sets it off. It's a garlic mustard sauce that I created myself just for the sandwich. I did throw a little spin on there, but I think it just made it better. And if you're not a carnivore when it comes to ham and pork. Mojo marinated jackfruit. It's a really, really good, delicious substitute. Better in person than on a t-shirt. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. March of 2020, I got furloughed, started selling sandwiches right outside my house. It's only up from here. Empanadas, some Cuban pastries, all the way up to uh, having rice bowls. I always knew that was missing here in Jacksonville. I always knew that I could bring something as simple as a sandwich that is a dime a dozen in South Florida, bring it here, make it good, and introduce it to people, and now they can share that experience that I had. Till next time, foodies, Renata DiGregorio, First Coast News, on your side.
When I arrived to talk with Anna Miller, she had the news on and was typing multiple messages to her friends in Ukraine. She showed me pictures of them hiding out in subway stations and in cellars. Well, all of what she is feeling and other Ukrainians, Ukrainian Americans are feeling right now translated into her art that you can come and see and talk with her about at the MoCA Wednesday night. It's never somebody else's war. It will affect all of us. Inside Anna Miller's home, you hear the news. You hear her checking in again with two dozen friends in her hometown, Kyiv. I can't sleep. It's hard to concentrate on a daily, uh, on a basic daily tasks. All you can think about what is happening on the ground right now. The photos she receives from her friends now are much different. Svetlana and her daughter right now hi hiding in a cellar. What you see inside Miller's home is how she expresses all of this. Painting expresses the pain for Ukraine and expresses strengths. It fits with her war series she started, painting the pain of mothers in the Middle East. Now the conflict on the canvas is of her home, brushstrokes bringing its message into yours. I live in St. John's County, very safe area, and we think that it's not going to touch us. It will touch us. We can't just stand by just because we are in a safe spot right now. We need to all rally around Ukraine against bullies. Renata Di Gregorio, First Coast News, on your side. People are packing up and heading home here at Cocoa Beach. A lot of disappointment. The next era of space exploration will not begin Monday. And so many of these people tell us they had gotten up at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning to come down here, have this view of the launch pad. But unlike the rocket, it's up in the air whether or not they'll be able to come back and actually see it when it launches. I'm going to cry. We're here from the UK, so we we're just hoping to see the launch, but it's not going to happen. So. As daylight grew, so did the anticipation for Artemis 1's launch, set for 8.33 a.m. But the crowd started much earlier. At 1 a.m. We never went to bed. Dragged the kids up at half past four this morning. We we're excited. We got here early this morning, around 3.30. So we've been, it's been a long wait, but we're excited. If your heart broke a little there, seeing this family in their Artemis shirts all excited, you're not alone. One minute after the world's most powerful rocket was supposed to have shot toward the moon, the launch was scrubbed. They were unable to get one of the rocket's engines to the right temperature, and this was after they dealt with a fuel leak. I was ready for the SLS, and just to hear it got scrubbed, it was just, it was heartbreaking because the last launch was 53 years ago, and it's, this is historic. For 14-year-old Elijah Rivera, who brought his telescope to the beach, this mission isn't over. Next time we'll be ready. History wasn't made today, but you can bet when it is, Elijah will have his telescope and millions of people will have their eyes on Florida and the stars. In Cocoa Beach, Renata Di Gregorio, First Coast News, on your side. Here at Edgewood Avenue Christian Church, a meeting tonight between JTA passengers and officials. At the end of this block is a bus stop, but JTA passengers who will be at this meeting say things aren't as easy for them as just hopping on a bus and getting anywhere they need to go. I've spent hundreds of dollars on Ubers and Lyfts just to get to work. It's affected my household financially and how I make decisions and like food choices. Stephanie Moore is one of the people 700 signatures impacted by the discontinuation of JTA's Route 15 through Murray Hill. This is petition to the Jacksonville Transportation Authority. Passengers say getting where they need to go is no longer easy. Now having to make multiple transfers to get to the bus they need. To make two and three changes before you get to the terminal, that's a major inconvenience and having to walk farther to reach a bus stop. JTA officials say there have been 24 logged concerns about Route 15 over the last eight months. Route 15 were to come back, it would either take more bus drivers. Would it take anything that you could hear tomorrow night? It's not going to take anything that we hear tomorrow night. We're really just, we don't, we don't have the bus operators. JTA so Chief Operating Officer Charles Frazier will be at the meeting Thursday and plans to discuss the expansion of the Woodstock Ready Ride Zone north of Murray Hill, which provides on-call transportation. We are, have a lot more flexibility, so maybe there's an opportunity to add some additional points of interest. 
Getting Route 15 back is the only answer these riders want. That's the only answer I want to hear. The meeting starts at 6 o'clock. Renata DiGregorio, First Coast News, on your side.